Hello, I'm Sophie Till. This is a series of presentations about the Taubman-Gilansky approach to strings. The presentations form a comprehensive series, but have also been designed to work alone so they can be used in various ways. They address some of the fundamental principles of the approach and show how these principles can provide answers to some of the most commonly asked questions by players of all levels, from professionals to students. The information presented makes most sense when we feel it ourselves, combining knowledge and sensation. There is an immediately recognizable, clear, physical logic to it. While these presentations are not a substitute for hands-on work, they can offer an entry point to this wonderful information. The five main causes of pain and injury. While it is helpful to look at these together, we need to understand this information in a broader context. When we come from pain and injury, getting ourselves out of it is an integrated, multi-step process. While knowing what we cannot do is helpful and can help us get out of pain, it is only a step in the process. If we don't have an alternative way to play that doesn't involve the injurious movements, then we are still stuck. We know what not to do, but we don't know how to do anything else. We cannot play or function from the negative. If, for example, we know that we cannot break the fulcrum of the wrist, but we don't understand and teach the arm to play a completely different way, we will be trying to play from the negative, in other words, just by thinking, don't break the fulcrum of the wrist. This will, in fact, probably make us do exactly that, and it is immobilizing. So knowing what is wrong is an all-important first step, but it is only a small piece of the puzzle. What we then need to know is how to play without involving any of these injurious motions. This requires a pedagogy that can teach us the specifics of the how so we can play with ease and comfort, pain-free. This gets us further along to the next step, but even this is not the final step. We then need to integrate this new information into the performance situation or regular work situation so that all the new information is functioning as an integrated whole in the environment in which we need it to work most. Once we've done this, we've really completed the job. So let's look at the five main causes of injury. The first is curling. Curling refers to the last joint of the fingers, pulling inwards, creating tension throughout the finger hand and forearm unit. We can curl one or many of the fingers and the thumb too. The thumb develops an outward curl when we do this. The most common cause of curling in the left hand comes from trying to make our fingers, which have a long, short design, form a straight line to match the straight string. In the right hand, curling is often found in the thumb as it is set in the bow hold. The second is breaking a fulcrum. This refers to breaking a fulcrum such as the wrist or one of my knuckles. If I drop my knuckles here and let them collapse, you can see immediately how the next set of knuckles has to jut out in compensating. Collapsing in some of the knuckles is very common, but any fulcrum can collapse. When the shoulder tries to relax rather than respond, this is a form of collapse also. Common fulcrum breaks are in the right wrist, which often tries to lead the up bow and or the down bow, and in the left hand, the wrist also when we are shifting, where the wrist is used to pull the arm forwards or backwards. Number three is stretching. This refers to one or more parts having to work in an extreme range of motion. Common examples for the left hand stretching are when we stretch the little finger to reach the upper notes. If I stretch the little finger, it loses its connection with the hand and forearm unit that provides it with support and enables it to work with ease. The finger will then have to press to create pitch and it will always feel weak. On the right side, it is common for the index finger and the little finger to stretch apart on the bow. Next, we come to isolating. Isolating often goes along with stretching and refers to the use of one part in isolation from the whole. So as with the little finger example for the left hand, once the finger has stretched away from the unit, it has no choice but to function in an isolated way, separate from the unit. This will require it to work very hard and it won't feel easy or comfortable. For the right hand, when we isolate the pinky finger and give it the task of balancing the bow, it is no longer working as part of the five finger team and cannot fulfill its role as part of an integrated whole. Isolation is common in both the left and right hands in many forms. And finally, twisting. Twisting refers to a fulcrum moving sideways away from the whole unit. 
So when the wrist twists, it moves sideways from the forearm. One of the most common twists for the left arm comes from the arm pulling to the right in order to reach the strings, causing the wrist to twist around. Or for the bow arm, the wrist twisting at the bow changes. There are many ways these five movements come up in the left and right hands. These are just some of the most common examples. What is important to know is that there is always a way to play without these. We just need the clear, precise, and specific knowledge to do so. And that is what the Taubman-Galansky work can do for us.